Good evening from beautiful Brisbane, Australia. My name is Linda and I'm your Certified Trauma Recovery Coach. Welcome to Complex PTSD TV and welcome to all our group members. It's lovely to have you here. For those that are new, it's a great place to be in a peer support group that's free and where you can gain so much knowledge and so much support that we didn't experience in our families. So afterwards, after this, I'm going to leave a link down below for the peer support group so that you can come and join us and gain a lot of healing traction along the way. Today, well, it's actually tonight, as you can tell by the lighting or lack thereof, tonight we're going to talk about catastrophizing and we're going to decatastrophize catastrophizing. Now, I've been asked to do this video by a client and I thought it would help you to in group to understand who I am and what I do and how I help people. And it would also help you understand why complex PTSD catastrophizing isn't your normal set of catastrophizing because there's a reason why. So let's start at the beginning and work out what is catastrophizing. So we want to think about it uh, as you're sitting here, we want to think about what is catastrophizing. So it's not when we're younger and we get called a drama queen. Okay, that's not catastrophizing. It's not a kid having a meltdown. That's not catastrophizing. Okay, so con catastrophizing involves irrational thoughts where we believe something is far worse than it actually is and we believe that we won't be able to manage the situation. Um, so this can include the present, so we can catastrophize about events that may or may not happen in the present and it can also include future events. So for those of us living through COVID, we know that when it first came, there would have been a lot of catastrophizing because people were really unsure about what was going to happen in many parts of their life. So catastrophizing takes a small event, for example, a disagreement with your partner, um, an upset at work, and creates negative thoughts such as, well, now my day's ruined, or the relationship's over, or I'll never get ahead, when there's no proof, so there's no evidence that this one event will impact your entire life, your entire future, your entire now, there's actually no evidence. So without the evidence, our perception can turn into a self-fulfilling prophecy. Further to this, our catastrophizing may result in thoughts that our partner or our job or our kids will remain angry, upset, um, it will have destroyed our future. Now here's the sinker, if you will. With complex PTSD, it's not our fault that the negative thoughts start to begin with. They actually come from the limbic system. Well, not from the limbic system. The pre... Let me just start, to start again. They come from the primitive part of our brain. I should have brought a brain with me. And, well, apart from mine, obviously. And the primitive part of our brain is where we learn and develop thought processes when we're young. So it's where the garden is laid for what will come afterwards. So a child who is affirmed, who has an adult walking beside them that helps them learn how to think constructively through events, uh, situations that arise, consequences of what will happen, their primitive brain as an adult, when a distressful situation comes up, it automatically is programmed to know, oh, I can manage this without even them thinking about it consciously. They, oh, I can manage this. It doesn't matter what happens in their life. It's manageable. But when we have so much stress impacted into our life, 
then it be, it makes it impossible from and we don't have supportive adults and we haven't learned how to think things through we haven't gone towards evidence based conclusions we really need to sit back and learn to catch those thoughts and go hey these aren't my fault all right this started in childhood but now that I can recognize them as being part of my trigger package, if you will. So usually when we're triggered, the ruminating thoughts come through. We're overly involved in stress and worry and concern and, you know, to the points of anxiety and depression, right? So we want to be aware of them and we want to, the first thing we want to do is be paying attention to them and next we want to question them. We actually want to slow down the thought process and really hear what we're saying to ourselves and asking ourselves, is this true? What has history shown me about this? So I was explaining to my client today that when things happen that are outside our control, so things that the government does is outside our control, things that other people do are outside of our control. It's so much that is outside of our control that we learn to bring things back to, I can learn how to manage this, okay? So I can see that I'm overthinking this. I can see that I'm projecting out that this is going to happen and that's going to happen and I'm worried. But the best thing I can do is sit down and go, hey, no, stop. Have a big red stop sign picture in your mind and go, stop, no. This is not the path I'm going down. This is what was recorded in the primitive part of my brain in childhood. Now I'm going to take this situation and I'm going to learn how to manage it. So learning how to manage a situation could be as simple as learning communication techniques. How do I communicate with my spouse about this? How do I communicate with my boss? How do I address my children? How do I have two-way conversations that are healthy and honest and authentic? So one of the things that you need to say is, what do I need to learn to do to manage this situation so that I can wrap my mind around my role, my part, and what I'm going to do? So when people tend to go on about, oh, this is going to happen and that's going to happen and why is me, I say, that's okay, but I don't have the bandwidth for that, Okay. That's not where I'm at in my life. It's not something I choose to ruminate on because I know that it's too easy for me to get emotional about everything being out of my control. So I say, no, I don't want to talk about that. It's not my thing. And even down to politics, somebody you know wanted to have a political conversation with me and I said, look, I appreciate where you're coming from, but I don't talk about it because I don't know enough. I don't listen to it because it's not my lane in life. This is my lane, helping people. I get one vote. That's it. I make the best of my one vote. And then unless I'm involved in politics, I don't get involved in politics. Uh, because we all have limited time as well. As parents, we have limited time. As business people, we have limited time. And so we've got to use that wisely and narrow down the things that we let into our life, the things that we let into our thoughts and so on. Now, if you're in group, I'm going to put uh, cognitive restructuring or decatastrophizing leaflet PDF in there under this video. And it goes through helping us blow up our catastrophizing. So, I'm going to think catastrophizing things. What is the worst thing that can happen? If the worst thing that I'm thinking can happen, what's the consequence of that? And then what are three events that would need to take place for the worst thing to happen? All right, so you're starting to break the thought process down. Is it likely that all three of these events will happen? What is a more likely outcome given what you know about the situation? All right, so you're looking for the evidence. 
Yes, the worst can happen, but it is not likely to escalate to worst case scenario. It is more likely that this will happen. And then you write down what it's more likely to happen from your experience and the evidence that you have at hand. Okay? And remember, you've got to part the waters. What's in my control? What can I do? What can I learn to manage? And what's not in my control? What's outside and I have to put it down and leave it. And just think of all the people that like drama. Okay? They're people that we have to put down and uh, put down sorry that sounded funny then <laughs> not put down as in you know we have to put them down place them over there <laughs> not put down as in go to sleep permanently uh, we have to be willing to walk away and make other connections and friendships so welcome to 2021 i hope you've had a good new year and welcome back to the channel and I look forward to sharing more information with you this year about complex PTSD and we are on I am also going to be equipping the Academy with lots more courses and information too. have a gorgeous week and I need the air conditioning on so I'm gonna go now remember to say good day and uh, I'll talk to you soon bye